Hi. In this video, we are going to talk about spark transformation and actions. It's a continuation of my previous video, and this is the final part of spark transformation and action uh, series. So well, in the last video, what we did is we went through some of the commonly used spark transformation, and also we spoke about uh, actions in spark. So we also talked about like a group by a group by transformation. We spoke about map and flat map, filter, aggregate, join, and window function. So we covered majority and bulk of the transformation in my previous video. In case if you have not seen that video, you can click the link on the top and watch this. It's a continuation of the video. We will be covering completely separate. Uh, transformations over here uh, but uh, some of the pre prerequisite steps are done in the previous video like installing spark in collab and creating the data frame or downloading the data is done in the previous video so i'm just going to take on from that uh, i've already run that part but you can look at my previous uh, video link and uh, get more details on it i'm also giving the link to my previous section in uh, the video description below and you can go to the video description and get it so let's get started now i'm going to use the coronavirus data set that I used in the previous video and the data set is available in my GitHub repo which you can download. Uh, so what I am uh, doing over here is I am calling the spark.read.option function to read an uh, CSV file and telling infer the schema from the data. So it's going to go to scan the data and then try to infer the schema and I am giving header equal to true because the first uh, row of the CSV file is the header file and I'm going to load it and let's quickly see the data set. So the data set is basically uh, contains the data set basically contains the state, country, uh, the latitude and longitude, basically date, and then the confirmed death and recovered uh, numbers uh, of uh, for the coronavirus uh, uh, pandemic that is going on. And we also have a column on state, clean, and city that I have a cleaned version, uh, which you can refer to again in the video description. I have a separate video for that, uh, but that is not required uh, to be seen for this particular video. So it has it, it has like data arranged by uh, date. It has data from 22nd Jan to 20th March. The last data set I created is 20th March. So it has uh, data um, arranged for that particular day, and uh, that's the data set. Let me quickly do a count on. Uh, basically, you can do a data frame dot count it's a spark data frame account on how many rows are there now what i'm going to do over here is i am going to pick only the data for the maximum date so the maximum date is uh, 20th march i'm going to pick data only for that particular day so for that what i am doing is i am doing kind of a sub query but i'm not using sql over here i am using uh, i am using the data frame join function so in this case what i am doing is i am uh, doing like uh, if you see the top data frame is corona underscore df so I'm taking the Corona underscore DF and joining it again with the same data frame. But in this case, what I'm doing is I'm grouping by country and state and I'm getting the max of date for each country and state. So, so for each country and state, it's going to get me the max date data that is available. And once I have the date, I am joining the outer data frame with inner data frame. It's basically two data frame from the same table. And it's just a halizing that we do in a typical SQL. That's what I'm doing. And I'm joining based on country, state, and date. And I'm doing an inner join. So what this will do is it will take the max date and join with the main data frame and give data only for the uh, maximum date that is available. So if you see uh, the output, uh, once I have run that, if you see the output, I have date only for 20th March uh, for all the uh, country and state combination. So I have data only the current date uh, as per uh, this data set. Right, so now being that, now what I'm going to do is I am uh, first going to uh, take data only for Australia and China. So in that case, what I'm doing is I am uh, taking that max data frame. Now the output I have assigned to a Corona max underscore DF, which is the max date data frame. I am selecting the country state uh, cleaned, confirmed and recovered column. These are the four columns I'm selecting. I don't need the latitude and longitude. I know they don't need the date. So select clause will only select the column that we want. It's similar to your SQL select clause. Then I am filtering only where the data is from Australia and China. So I'm telling filter uh, where the country column where is in Australia and China. So I'm taking the data from Australia and China and I'm grouping by country and I'm doing a sum. So basically it's going to take the numeric column. The numeric column is confirmed and recovered. It's going to do a sum and show 100 records. Uh, in this case, you will get only a uh, few records. The 100 is not there, but I just given 100. So now if you see here, the output as Australia and China, and then you have sum of recovered and sum of confirmed. 
now when you typically do a uh, reporting right you want a page level summary so basically i want in this page if the page has only australia and china it if it has 10 countries it will have 10 10 different rows for it i want to know the total of uh, con some confirmed and total of some recovered now i can do it two ways one way is i can run the top query i can uh, run one more query which gets the sum of it and then i can union the data so that you can uh, see it in a single data frame but what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the cube function that is available uh, in spark the cube function it is available in the typical sql as well so let's see like uh, let me first run this and you see the output and then i will explain it so in this case what is going to happen is you are going to get australia and china uh, separately and then the null means like it's for all the subtotal so if you add 81250 plus 791 you will get 8, 82041 and similarly this if you add you will get the top one so what i'm doing is the query is almost similar as stock so i'm filtering by for australia and china and i'm doing a cube on country and uh, basically i'm doing a sorry i have to use the top one so basically i'm doing a cube of country so basically the, the cube function what it will do is it will do an all combination of columns for that group by condition in this case uh, cube will automatically invoke a group by condition right and it will give a combination of what uh, group by condition in this case country i have given so in this case country it's aggregating it and showing the totals over here and then i'm just doing a sort over here which will sort by the country name so that's why you are getting this additional column rather than doing a union of the data frame i'm just running a queue function to get it now what i want to do in the next one is i want to do by both country and state now the let me run the next one so what if you now i have only country group by now i have given both country and state when i do a country by state if you see over here i am getting all the australia column and then australia state null uh, aggregates then for each of the country only at the state level i get, I get aggregates so basically when i do a cube i get all combination of it if um, if i have like uh, multiple country and state for uh, for uh, country level i will get aggregate for individual state level i will get aggregate which makes uh, it not so interpretable right so that's where uh, cube is all combination but how can i overcome this i want only at the state level and then at the country level uh, to keep it simple i don't want at like each and every state level and that's why the roll up function comes into play and what roll up does it it does just creates subtotals based on the grouping condition so instead of cube what i have done is i have given a roll up over here and my grouping condition is still same it's country and state clean right so if i run this rather than getting all combination what i am going to get is i am going to get country and state if you see over here on top i am getting like a uh, country and state combination then country uh, combination null state is null and then both uh, country and state null it's a subtotal so basically this is like an uh, cleaner version where i'm getting uh, getting the output or subtotals only for the group by condition so that is roll up so cube uh, is a all combination a roll up is basically a subtotal or only group combination right so that's that's roll up and cube this is two other functions which is very handy when you want to uh, do a total summary or page level summary now you can also do correlation between variables you want to see like how how much confirmed and recovered are correlated right if you have two variables you can also do you can use the uh, data frame dot correlation function and you can, if you really see like the confirm and recover column are pretty much correlated because the higher the confirm cases you can see more recovery as well as we start flattening the curve right so that is the correlation function now sometimes i have to do repetitive action on the data frame right it's not only like one time action i want to do a iterative processing and typically in machine learning you take the same data frame and do like multiple iterative processing and you may want you may want to cache the intermediate data set right and that's what it is like you have the max the corona max dev dot cache function which will cache the data set in memory right now there is two function cache and persist cache what it does it it keeps every data in memory so if you have pretty huge data set you don't want to keep everything in memory you want to better control it but if you have small data set you can keep everything in memory so that your joins are faster right so the so the cache function is basically going to load the data in memory and i'm just going to do a count function of it and i'm going to time it uh, so it's going to run multiple iteration so what it is telling is the best is around 66.5 millisecond per loop out of uh, different uh, run net date 
right the slowest is like 14.90 times longer the reason is spark as i said is a lazy evaluation right so what is going to happen is when you give a count it is just going to create build a dag and then uh, first time when you run it it will cache it and the next time it will use the data from the cache right the other way of doing it is persist function now in persist you can control how you want to do it so what i'm doing is i am importing a uh, uh, storage level from spice park and i am using the corona max df again and calling the persist function and then i am telling i want to keep it in a combination of memory and disk not only memory there are other settings like memory only but i'm going to keep it in memory and disk and do you want to do this for you very huge very large data set you want to balance between memory and disk right and that's what it does and again i'm going to run the time it function if you see the output is not shown here because it creates a dag and it's going to run it now and here it's taking around 63.1 millisecond uh, per loop right so that is uh, that is the persistent cache function in now in case if i want to use some of the um, some of the pandas function right like uh, i uh, i i have spark spark does not have visualization support i or i have something that pandas that is very good i want to use it and spark does not have it so i can convert and um, convert the spark data frame uh, corona df to pa to pandas that's what here i'm doing i'm converting it to pandas and assigning it to pd so so this this data frame will convert into pandas and you, you can use any of the pandas function so what i'm going to do is i'm just uh, using the pandas correlation function uh, it is going to correlate every column that is there and uh, every, every numeric column and going to cre create a correlation matrix that's what it does now uh, pandas one one uh, one thing you need to remember when you are doing pandas is uh, when you execute two pandas all the data from different executors that are distributed will come to the driver node uh, because it has to get it to local and there can be a performance impact if you are doing with a large data set uh, so pandas is very good when you want to subsample it and send it so that you can do some visualization and analysis on top of it using matplotlib or some other function so that is uh, two pandas the next thing is i want to take this i want to convert that so that i can run sequels on it like some may be not comfortable with uh, spark data frame native functions uh, they want to use pure, pure sql function all the data frame actions and transformations i did are available in spark sql as well and uh, many people who are available with uh, uh, spark sql can directly use it so what i can do is i can take the data frame corona max df i can create a replace or temporary view i am just naming it as corona right now you can also create a permanent table if you have like hive or hdfs or any other uh, data base support or in databricks if you have uh, uh, if you have databricks subscription you can just create a permanent table so it, but here i am creating a temporary table so temporary table is available only for this session the permanent table is persisted outside and can be used by multiple session that is the difference so i have created this temporary view now i can query if i had just sql queries from calling corona so what i am doing is i am doing a spark dot sql select star from uh, corona and i am just printing it so it will show all the output so now you can run uh, typical sql functions in the next one i am doing like country in australia and canada the same thing what we did on top top i am just picking up these two countries and i am uh, running it i can do an order by clause uh, i did a sort on top i can do an sql order by uh, so in this case i have picked data only for australia and uh, canada now i am just order buying it in this case now other two function that executed is is roll up and cube we can do the same thing over here so that now what i am doing is i am doing a country state i am explicitly giving sum of confirmed and recovered uh, that in the earlier one i just selected the column and did a dot sum but now i am moving into more sql syntax right and i am just doing the country in australia and canada group by roll up of country and state clean right so that's what i'm doing over here and it will basically uh, roll up the data by country and set the same output as we saw in the previous one and the next one is we are executing group by cube instead of roll up where it's going to give output in all combination so uh, so if you see basically it's giving in all combination again now uh, so that's about it from spark transformation and action uh, i would say you watch both the video where you can uh, 80 80% or 90% of the transformations and actions that are frequently used in spark i have covered everything so you can practice around and uh, uh, you can use the video comments if you have any doubt or issues uh, thank you